episode eight. Episode eight, my boy. What's up? It's a very special episode. We finally did it. We kidnapped someone and forced them to watch two movies. We've got a very special guest. <laughs> our friend, Michael. What's up, guys? Mike G in the building, man. How I'm you here, feeling? man. I'm feeling pretty good. He's joining us. Hell yeah. And we're back. Two new movies. That's right. Um, we did it again. Yeah, we're going to discuss them right now. Very um, interesting films you you chose. You guys chose. Yeah. I picked one of them. Yeah. 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 I say let's start with... Let's start with... I uh, can't even remember the titles. Well, we not. both watched all watched one just yeah, before Yeah, do we this, watch I them in like. the same order? Like, yes, we I do. I think so, yeah. We both so, watched one last night and we both watched one so yeah, let's, before. So, yeah, let's start with... The most recent Primal one. Fear. Probably. Primal yeah. Fear. Yeah. yeah. Or should, okay, yeah, I already said it. Let's we'll start with Primal Fear. It could go either way. But 1996. Um, this one was suggested by another friend, uh, Kendall. Shout out. One day we'll have to have you on. Um, yes. Classic 90s movie. Yeah, I was, like. was kind of... Su- in the style of those movies. I was kind of surprised by this choice. It's but my first time seeing this or even hearing about this movie. Yeah, I, I actually told him the last time we hung out that I hadn't seen it, but I realized I had. I... I watched like a little Ed Norton video and I saw like him talking to Richard Gere and I was like, oh, it's that movie. Ah. Yeah, I'll admit I'd had it spoiled for me just at some point in my life okay. that I just sort of remembered it, but I didn't have all the details. But it, 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 it it's like a pretty good movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of liked it. The first time I, I watched it, I really didn't remember it that well, I guess, but, you know, like I kind of forgot that I had seen it, but if he would have said like, oh, the one where he's on trial or just something to yeah yeah, yeah. courtroom drama yeah or he's real young yeah but but it's good i, I enjoyed it what, what do you guys think uh i kind of just enjoyed going back and watching i don't have any reason to watch this kind of movie i feel like nowadays and you don't get Same. them anymore i don't think are they like mm-hmm. netflix originals or something now there's not you mean like courtroom yeah or just these kind of movies i don't know where it's like four big name actors just kind of doing just sort of a normal little story Small stories it doesn't seem like those exist anymore that much so it was kind of cool to go back and watch it i wouldn't say i loved it yeah, it was sort of, but it was fun for what it was. It was yeah. like an extended episode of Law and Order. It kind of felt <laughs> like <laughs> something, you know, it fits right in with like Time to Kill and all these movies at the time. Oh, so yeah. Like, I forgot about that I one. I feel like yes, it, they it relies to on die. T- twist a lot. Yeah. I was kind of thinking with the twist, like that's a very 90s because he recommended Bone Collector. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which the main thing that I took away with from that was like it was very much like Seven. Mm-hmm. Which is another big twist, mm-hmm. you know. So. Say, yeah, this kind of made me think of the movie itself, not so much, but Usual Suspects in regards to yeah. some Ooh, the big of twist. The twist. There being a, you got to get them with the swerve. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this has a twist and then a twist too. It has kind of a twist midway with some of the multiple personality disorder stuff, and then sure. at the end with it maybe not being that. You know, again, you know something that I didn't think of the first time that. I was kind of thinking of the whole time this time was the OJ trial. Yeah, that was been know, going on like, around. What, yeah, it was like before. a year before. Yeah, and it's like um, David Lynch, Lost Highway was actually inspired by the OJ thing. Yeah, and I okay. kind of listened to him talk about how he was inspired to make a movie by just the whole OJ thing and like the idea of a person doing something and not remembering it. Yeah, you know what I mean and. And this, like, even the lady who was, I guess she would be the prosecutor. Yeah. I was thinking, like, oh, Marsha Clark, you know. And then there's, like, the scene where she's holding the knife. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, oh, that's so OJ. Yeah, there's definitely some parallels there for sure. Um, So, but I I liked it. Um, What Someone else uh, can chime in. I like, I feel like there was a general theme of, like, manipulation going on because the whole time... You're thinking Richard, you know, Richard Gere, he's this fucking like Marty. He's like, I, I like to play the lottery, but with people's lives. So yeah, you don't yeah. really know how slimy he is at any point in the movie. Like, you know, they make him less slimy at points. You know, mm-hmm. you learn that, oh, maybe the guy, uh, the Hispanic dude he was dealing with, that sub story. That like, oh, white, yeah. that super white Hispanic <laughs> yeah, guy. You end up learning that he's kind of like socially conscious and stuff, and they're going to testify for yeah. him. And then, you know, it's like, oh, so maybe that is no slimeball criminal, and Richard Gere's yeah. trying to pick the good ones or I was, whatever. I don't know. 
I was thinking one thing about it that I kind of liked is that you never really know if Richard Gere believes him or not. Yeah. I feel like he did. I feel like he really went to bed. I don't know. He does say in the you know multiple times I, I do, but he also but he could have been multiple times he doesn't care. He, he doesn't, doesn't think care. about it at all. Mm, yeah. He's just trying to prove there is. Well, regardless. you're right. He could have been putting on an act for everyone else, like uh, the his ex prosecutor, you know, homegirl or whatever, yeah. Yeah. putting That's on an act weird, for everyone. Weird subplot. Yeah, I, I was thinking that. I'm like, does this actually add anything? I does it liked have it. to be like? When he like lingered on her at the bar and was like, "We, you want to dance?" There was that whole like he yeah. brought that up again. To Just it, turn you know, around. Was like, I don't know. Turn around, and bite me. Um, I but was thinking. Yeah, I like that about one it. thing. I kind of thought right at the end was because with what Ed Norton did, it's like the priest was this terrible monster. Yeah, so it's like, was. yeah, I think it would have been a little bit better if he would have actually defended someone who deserved you know because it's like ed norton ultimately deserved to get off yeah he killed someone who was like making kids do kid porn yeah I, I you know so it's like i think too it would have almost been more interesting if they stuck with the thing where it was like yeah he has multiple personality disorder and one of them appears traumatically sometimes and that is he did actually kill him under that personality and then they're like but it's not it, you know, arguing somehow. Like, what if you slept, sleepwalked and killed somebody? Sure. Like, what the yeah. hell are they going to do? There's got to be some sort of argument there. That's kind of interesting instead of just being like, yeah, he was just acting, you know, the whole time. You know, yeah. the funny thing about this movie is as I'm watching it before all the twists start happening, I was getting like a Philadelphia vibe. I don't know if y'all have ever seen that. I never with, have. With, I know kind I, of what I just know it's about AIDS. AIDS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I've, seen, I've seen Tom Hanks people, laid out in yeah. a bed not looking so good. But yeah. I don't know the plot I've just so heard much. people joke about it. Yeah, like, that's I wish I you were in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the kind of references that yeah. I, yeah, that's all I that's know. All I, <laughs> seems sad. But that's how I felt before, like. I, I think before Roy popped out the first time, I was like, I'm getting like a serious vibe from this. And <laughs> there were, I was thinking, um, have you ever seen Cape Fear? No, no I haven't seen oh, no, it. Oh, man. Like. So that, it's, it's been remade. Um, it was like um, like a black and white movie. And then the one with De Niro, De Niro yeah. Scorsese. It's, it's a really cool movie. Mm-hmm. It's not as law, you know, legal in the courtroom thing, yeah. but it's. It's just a cool movie. I, I would say I would recommend that to someone who likes this. Um, I kind of was thinking, um, I was getting kind of some Wire vibes. You've seen The Wire, Michael? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Andre like, Brower. Like the... Yeah, looking super young. Like, yeah, um, hella young. Francis Andre. McDermott being young, too, and this was crazy. <laughs> um, like the... Francis like when, McDermott was amazing. Yeah, Francis, I love her so much. Yeah, she's, she's, great. she's great in everything. I think this is one of the youngest movies I've seen her in. Me, I mean, too. Like... What, uh, like Blood Simple, Blood Simple yeah, yeah. That would be the only other thing. Um, Alfred Woodard, too. Let's not forget the judge. Well, I guess actually Big Lebowski uh, yeah. is probably mm-hmm. along the, around the same time as no, I'm sorry, no, Big Lebowski, Fargo, is Fargo, really yeah. Fargo actually, would yeah. probably yeah. be around. Nah, yeah, yeah. But I was also kind of thinking, um, Devil's Advocate. Never saw that. Oh, it's so good. Well, back to the wire, though. You were saying there were oh yeah, like, like yeah, yeah, like when when um. Perlman and Levy were meeting, yeah, kind of like talking to them, discussing stuff like behind the scenes, mm-hmm. and um, I kind of just like the stuff that happens in the court, like in that, like when Omar is in, on the stand, yeah. like yeah, I kind of like that a little bit more than this, mm-hmm. you know. Right. I mean, or even some some of the behind the scenes stuff of like the higher up prosecutor related people, yeah, like, yeah, like, ties to real estate and all this yeah. stuff. It's very like the wire. You start meeting those guys yeah. in, like season four or something. Yeah. They Def- start coming to play. Definitely better fleshed out. You know, you start of and you start getting a lot of those behind the scene like talks with the judges and things like that. Exactly. It's kind of a courtroom drama thing. Like even know, like, McNulty meeting with the judge. Yeah, exactly. And him like and trying has, to hit on Perlman. And he's worked with a lot of them enough to have the kind of personal relationship where they go get a sandwich even though they're about to be like adversaries in some sort of way. Exactly. Very interesting, yeah. Um... Let me see. Oh, I did. Uh, <laughs> the one time I did laugh was when he had the, uh, I forget, the Irish guy who was like kind of the main bad guy when he had him on the stand. And he's huh. just like, yeah, the, uh, he just uh, $60 million. <laughs> he just delivers that like yeah. so astonished. The, like the uh, dad from Say Anything. The girl's dad is that Sha- dude. Sha- oh, Shaughnessy. Sha- John yeah, yeah. Mahoney is Mahoney, that. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yes. Wow. Million dollars. I don't remember anything about say anything yeah, except like for the girl's dad holding prison the holding end. up the, yeah, the classic yeah. scene. Yeah. That's just all I could remember him from. Um, I did I have anything else? Oh, I wasn't sure. How did Marty find the tape? That wasn't very clear. Well, he just like they know. I guess they know it's going to be in there, and they send Andre Brower in to just. And he opens a thing, and the uh, he finds one labeled like labeled, sex yeah. party or some and shit so he like puts that. that. Label onto another tape and mm-hmm. steals it. Oh, out. Okay. so it looks like it's still in there. I, I didn't see the label. I guess. Yeah. Okay. There's I can only weird make a moment like where he's six. like acting like he's gonna tell Andre Brower. I'm just gonna call him by his actor's name. Something to do, and he goes, "Oh man!" And then it cuts to him like breaking into this building. It's yeah. kind of a weird sequence. Fucking pulling a Watergate. And yeah, shit. and pulling the tape out and changing the label. Yeah. Um. There was also tricky. the scene where Frances McDormand was on the stand, and she, they ask if they had the transformation where he switches. Yeah. Yeah. And they on don't. tape. And she says no, but they did. They do show it. Though, they have yeah. a brief one. They show that first one where she kind of looks at him weird, and you don't actually know what happened for about fifteen more minutes in the movie, when you realize he like when he cursed at her the first time. Oh, was, but like, maybe, but still, okay. I was thinking like, yeah. did she lie under oath? But okay, maybe not. I don't really know. No, okay. she didn't have when he turned into Roy like completely. Yeah, there was just like, um, a glimpse of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, overall, I would say, I. Mm, Come on, babe. Think about it. I'm feeling like a a light to decent 80. I'm in the 80 range okay, on this okay. one. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Uh, you know, go ahead, Mike. You know, I, I kind of enjoyed it. Like I said, it gave me a reason to watch this sort of movie. I felt like I haven't seen it in a long time and uh, I wouldn't have gone back to it without the recommendation. It reminded me of some of the stuff in like the 90s that like, like the Fox local channels would play movies on like a Saturday in the middle of the day, and it would always be like a few good men. Like after all or the first blood, after and, all the cartoons. Yeah, 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 yeah kind of yeah. later in the noon. day, it would be this weird. At noon, like, it would pop off. Yeah, it'd be some stuff, and I, I feel like I would have watched this then and remembered everything about it, enjoyed it, and uh, it was cool going back to it. But I'd say as a movie, I'd give it like a, I'll give it a sixty-seven. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it's over 50. That's still good. Yeah, yeah you know, it's still it's still fun. Yeah. There's a lot of fun to be had on the entire spectrum of the point range. You know, it's not I, I agree. I'm going to say, you know, shout out to my boy Kendall recommending this movie. I would have never watched this movie. <laughs> but now that I've seen it, um, there's something for me to appreciate about like a courtroom drama centered on the lawyers and their whole game, you know, getting into their psyche a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, for the love of the game type shit going on with them, the manipulation. I, I like that whole theme. Like at the end, it's like Richard Gere. Ha ha. No, you have been manipulated. Yeah. yeah. You know, I thoroughly enjoyed that. So I'm going to give it a, like an 87. Okay. okay. 87, okay. man. I'm not I highly recommend it. this film. The, the one other thing that it, it was before I watched this, I watched this, uh, pretty interesting video on ed norton's career and how how he's basically they basically just went through like all the movies he's been on but he he's been like very selective when when he could be like but i guess like he early on had like a three picture deal with paramount or whatever and he became known for like rewriting movies on set and stuff and people he's very difficult well that was kind of like sort of the reputation he had but the video kind of reminded me, and I, I hope you guys have heard this story, that because I know you're both fans of Patrice, he told a story. He worked on this one movie with Ed Norton called Twenty Fifth Hour. I don't think I've heard this actually. <laughs> uh, it's a movie that Spike Lee did, and and Patrice was like on O and A talking yeah. about uh, working with Ed Norton <laughs> and how like Ed Norton, Patrice plays a doorman. And yeah. Ed Norton plays this guy who's like going to jail for life, and like it's his last night, you know, the twenty fifth hour or before whatever he before he up. has to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Patrice basically gets the news that he's got to go for life, uh-huh. and he's supposed to be like, "Whoa, that's crazy!" Like kind of laughing. Uh-huh. And Ed Norton like tells him, like, kind of like, "I think you would play it more seriously." <laughs> and Patrice was like, "Okay, you know." He tries it, and then Spike Lee is like. What are you doing that for? <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> I just thought that was really funny. Like his little story of Ed Norton trying to make someone else ad lib or yeah, do it yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of trying to slide him a note. Yeah. But 
I thought he was greatness as, as well. If we're if we're gonna, it it he got me. I ain't gonna lie, it got me. And part of the fun of these movies too is just like it's weird, but you know, looking back and since we hadn't seen it, we've seen so many Ed Norton projects where sure. he's considerably older, older, and I'd say a little bit more talented because he's a little kind of cheesy at some points in this. Yeah, the southern accent, it's a little, it's a little goofy. Yeah, his it's accent, super like anytime someone, boy, weird, anytime like anytime someone has to play two characters, it's yeah. like. There's a good chance I think they it's both not suffered a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because of but that. I did think um, Split was good. This made me think of Fight Club a little bit. Yeah, yeah a little bit for you sure. Know. It's interesting to see in it and be like, I actually. So I'd heard some of the, I just remembered some vague spoilers for the movie and knew there was a twist, but. I it's a 90s movie. I think it's I was accidentally be a twist. putting a little American History X in the movie because I thought some place stood up and just like threw out like a seek high and it was like, oh, we were like wow. oh my god, Richard. I thought that was what he did at the end. And Richard Gere was like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> and it just you know cuts to black or something. I thought I knew there was a twist, but I couldn't remember. I think I literally was just putting a little bit of American okay. History X in there with him on accident. <laughs> All right, he got me at the end, man. I ain't gonna lie. It was fun getting to see that some of those performances are almost novelty at this point. It's sort of fun to be like, oh, that's Francis McDormand, you know, yeah. super young. Yeah. Richard Gere is so smooth, by the way. I, I've I, never I seen hate his so eyes. Smooth. Yeah, he I looks, hate his eyes. His, his little squinty eyes. Yeah. They're so beady and yeah, yeah, soulless. Yeah, he was, he's so smooth he, all the time. He seemed, that my problem, one of my problems with the movie was how creepy he seemed in all the scenes where he's trying to get her back. He's Especially a freaky at the, boy. At the end of the movie, she doesn't seem interested. And he's like, want to dance again? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to sing the music, too, that they're going to dance to. And he a fan. Just, he a fan. It yeah, seemed like, weird. When they're at that event and he's singing it. He's just got a different vibe to him, man. It kind of reminds me of V for Vendetta a little bit too just like the scene where uh, the priest gets killed okay yeah I will say the chop of the fingers there was a full blown actual piece of like prosthetic work there where you see real quickly his whole half his hand gets chopped I was like like okay okay." there was no more of that but it was like cool just to go all the way with it the gal's eyes were good yeah they did yeah they did flip over over. they had a little bit of Uh makeup on them there yeah Yeah. Uh enough (laughs) (laughs) moving on to 2006's Children of Men. Children of Men, yeah. Woo! Alfonso Cuaron. Yes. I, I will say they both of these movies were based off of books. Okay, I didn't know that. That kind of makes sense. Primal Fear does sort of have that feeling. You know, a lot of those are. Mm-hmm. Children of Men definitely has that vibe. Yeah. Um, I saw... I was starting to look at the trivia for Tril- Children of Men. I didn't actually get there, but I saw that he did not read the book. He so, just... We're at the plot points. I'll, I'll admit to you now, I've actually seen Children of Men a lot. And I saw it pretty young when it first came out. And I really liked the director. And I read the book, too. I saw that and he directed um, Harry Potter, Prisoner, Prisoner of Azkaban. Prisoner of Azkaban, the third then, one, randomly. He also did Gravity. Yeah, he did Gravity. And he also did a uh, I Spanish. I did not like Gravity. I, thought I didn't was, really love it, either. I was kind of boring. Um, he was more famous for a while for doing a Spanish language movie. Um, that was released here as uh, NC-17, E2 Mama Tambia. Oh, I didn't know it was NC-17. Um, yeah, okay. it had some struggles, you know. Uh, it, it probably should Don't we be. all? Look, yeah. Well, looking back at it now, it's pretty <laughs> tame. It's just kind of sexual content, but it's nothing compared to some stuff I've seen in theaters since then. Okay. But he directed that and was kind of popular for that, too. So, obviously, you like this movie. I, I do enjoy it, yeah. I mean, okay. there are things to nitpick about, but I do like it, yeah, and I recommend it. Why'd you recommend it, do you think? Um, well, I was kind of already planning on watching it, and Keegan had asked me if there was anything I recommended. It was just kind of convenient to be like, Keegan, dude, I'm probably going to watch this within the week. You know, I was just thinking yeah. about it, and I haven't seen it in a handful of years. You, so. you did kind of say uh, No Country. I, I was thinking about that a little bit, um, just because. But I, I think... We should do like a No Country and um, There Will Be Blood. Yeah, I was actually going to say like a double feature because that was, they yeah. were both going for Best Picture at the same year. And I think year. like they were shot in the same filming, town, I heard that. They were filming like, close enough that I've heard things about it. They kind of yeah. had to schedule some of the more acoustic problems just to like, if wow. they were going to pop off like fake firearms, they had to let the No Country oh, versus wow. there were both set no because they were both out in West Texas. Crazy. Or something. Yeah. But anyway, wow. back to the, what did you think, Someday. Kurt? What did you think? I thought it was fantastic. First of all, I've seen this movie before, <laughs> oh, but okay. I've completely forgot. So towards the middle of the film, I'm like, oh, shit, I've seen this before. Yeah. Um, I, had, I had not seen that. Okay. I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. I thoroughly enjoyed the performances of um, 
Well, uh, you know, Clive Owen, Julianne Moore, Michael Caine is my yeah, guy. Yeah, he's great, and I liked oh. him a lot. I was thinking that was Donald Sutherland, at, like, <laughs> until the end. <laughs> really? I'm like, oh, that was Michael Caine. I thought it was so Michael Caneian. Like, hey, it's so, like, like let, let's have a smoke. Come on, y'all. Hey, yeah. amigo. Let's die. Hey, yeah. amigo. <laughs> <laughs> Pull my finger. Uh, I love yeah, uh, that scene. Was Chewy like, Del, yeah. Edge of Four. Chewy Del, yeah. He's Chewy. Great. My favorite <laughs> part of this movie, and I don't know if you guys, like, peep this was like so uh clive owen earlier on was like let's just make it public you know and every mm-hmm. and all the fucking fish are like get the fuck out of here yeah so when they finally do make it public in that building that's just getting bombarded by yeah. it, it's like a jesus type it's, it's yeah. a jesus type moment it's a moment but it, it's it's it they they get all the way out and then it's like Nah, fuck it. Back to yeah, fighting. The RPG <laughs> comes flying yeah. out of nowhere, yeah. And it just like that it, mattered for a good the, two minutes. Two minutes, yeah, and man. it's just like, yeah, people really don't care now, bro. Yeah. It's it's beyond this. So uh, all in all, this is a fantastic. This is how you do this kind of story. Like it's a very serious story. Yeah, it's super. It's pretty dark too. I thought it was dark. Twist. It's a little topical. A little bit, yeah. I mean, oh. dystopian. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want to get into why it's topical. No, it's 2027 too, so it's kind yeah. of like close by. It, but it's a very realistic depiction of how you would do that sort of, you know, mass uh, exodus uh, type exodus type situation. What do they call it? mass uh, deportation? Yeah, type. they don't hold anything back either. But by the end of the movie, you get you see things that are like full-blown Guantanamo Bay slash like Holocaust things happening oh, to yeah. people before they get into the uh, like immigrant camp or whatever yeah. it is, the no, fugitive camp. They're laying bodies down with blankets on them. Well, they had a guy standing up with like a hood on there like blasting weird heavy metal music and that's just straight out of like oh. Guantanamo Bay. That's just, that's the only thing oh, we're wow. thinking about that even, for. Yeah. Yeah. That's that one of the famous shots stuff. is they have some poor guy just T-posing on a crate. They have one listening have to the Barney the Barney song for like forty eight hours straight. <laughs> it sucks, man. That's it crazy. Sucks ass. They were definitely pulling from some of that though. They don't hold back that with like England being not a good place to be. It's pretty dark dystopia. I love those type of movies. Leon V for Vendetta. Yeah, this one also. Some of those vibes, yeah. I think I like V a little bit more. Um, oh, really? Yeah. It it I like this movie. It, it kind of it it had a little bit of stuff that kind of confused me, like once they got into the where like the refugees were mm-hmm. i was just like how do these people even have guns like, fujis like what's going on they might have here? just let them kind of destabilize a little bit under control and sort of because it was kind of weird when it, things pop off all of a sudden there's all these like muslim groups that are having yeah, these like funerals like, and all this music on? starting like, and it was a little bit more just where was like, this the whole time yeah it was like, more like what? a crazy uh party and everything's so everybody's standing around a fire and then the next morning it is full blown like i think it gets a little artistic at that point with the depiction too um but it had a lot of cool stuff that i really liked like the the i think maybe the first moment where i was like okay this is this is crazy i'm like fully in is like Julian. when they were in the car with, yeah yeah, yeah that's like, it. she gets don't nicked and yeah, i just a, love how like it's such a like sweet moment like oh they might get back together mm-hmm. you know like there's a future for yeah, him pulls the out from under it it's hard. just like oh man that's not what i expected and and that was just like such a cool scene like that horde that's the motorcycle the and he flexes really hard with uh tracking shots on a lot of these it opens with a pretty big oh, one man. with him going into the coffee shop and then back out in the explosion, explosion. and then in the car it is there are some fake cuts in it just to help it along but most of that scene is just the camera rotating, rotating, rotating back and forth uh, up oh, until she gets shot. Wow. I mean, it goes for a long time. I feel like I've seen like a behind the scenes clip on that scene specifically because yeah. it's, it's exactly Actually right. going up into the building I didn't even really and getting the that. baby very and smooth. coming back out is like, I don't know if that's all one tracking shot, but it might be two really big ones. There's just a bunch of them really chill, uh, kind complicated of, uh, sequences going yeah. on around them. It felt a little... Uh, now that you say like tracking shot, I'm thinking uh, eyes wide shut, kind of like okay, the war, uh, the yeah, war yeah, footage yeah. and that. Or uh, actually, Paul Thomas Anderson does a shit ton of them, and uh, Boogie Nights, he does a bunch of really big ones just to like flex multiple times. Once like I saw it. Julianne Moore, yeah, I was just yeah, like, yeah, she definitely make you think Boogie of Nights. Yeah, so she's in Magnolia much. and a couple others. I haven't seen too. Magnolia. Yet. Oh, you got it's, to, yeah, it's yeah, good. I want to. Um, but um, yeah, he does a bunch of those and that, and there's maybe like four or five big ones that just happen randomly in children and men i think they're a little overrated now but it's cool to see them when they're done well i thought some of the 
as much as I like the soundtrack, I thought some of the music cues were a little like when they when he goes to meet is it his cousin, his brother the who King gets Crimson, the Crimson yeah. drop in the car? Yeah, yeah. Court of the Crimson King. I, it was such a cool song, but yeah. I was like, awesome. oh my gosh, like why? Yeah. <laughs> but, they double up on Ruby Tuesday. They have yeah. an up tempo one and sort of a down tempo one yeah. with the uh, suicide kits. And then the other one that I was like, wow, this is a bit heavy handed is like when they first reach like the Fuji camp. Yeah. You, the way you were talking about concentration camps, mm-hmm. they play the song by the Libertines. Okay. Okay. Called All Day Men Frey. Okay. Yeah. See, I didn't recognize that. Cause I, and I, always, I knew you were a fan of them, but I like look that up. It's like one of the slogans that was over one of the camps that, okay. uh, that I think means like labor liberates. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, some okay. Nazi shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but it was cool. You know, I, I didn't mind that. Um, let's yeah. see. Um, I felt this movie was uh 145 minutes versus Primal Fear, two hours and ten minutes. Yeah, it was a longer yeah. movie. Yeah. I, Did you feel one was felt long? Well, what's or? weird is going into Children Men, I'd convince myself that it was like a two and a half hour long movie or something. It, me too. Because so much and happens, I, and it, it wasn't. It, well, it was less like I based on my memories of it. You know, I didn't actually not after I rewatched it, but before going into it, I was like, okay, I really need to set aside some time, and I was assuming Primal Fear would be the opposite, like a yeah. a nice hour forty five. I'm Primal Fear fed a, a little long sometimes, but I'd say I am a big fan of Children of Man, but it does feel like it keeps going sometimes. Yeah. Or like it really slows down sometimes, then it ramps up really yeah. hard and then really slows down. And I think by the end of the movie, you're, you're kind of feeling that a little bit. It also wears you out some, too, which is yeah, like it's it's moving like, forward constantly, getting in the car literally, and just doom, doom, doom. I kind of like that about it. I feel like it was on rails. Yeah, I mean, bit. it kind of is. It's a road trip for a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. In various different cars. I like how, like, you know, um, just like how everyone helped, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That was cool. I That scene where, uh, what's the Michael Caine's name? Uh, Jasper. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was so sad. Yeah. There's a woman and there's a dead woman and a dead dog in there. Yeah, they do say that. Well, I, that that scene always kind of makes me laugh, even though it's so sad. Because when he first shoots him in the hand and like actually oh. blows off some of his fingers, yeah. he throws something at him and he goes "fuck you." Yo, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's such a funny little moment, and he kind of comes back around with it with this "pull my finger" again, which is a little hacky, but yeah, you know, it's he knows what he's getting into. He was high as fuck though. His, yeah, yeah, and he uh, knew he knew going out there was gonna happen. That's he why had that, he uh, gave his wife the uh, strawberry cough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the quietest? It was a suicide kit. It lets yeah. you just kill yourself. Yeah. Oh. You, you inject. Was, yeah. So when he, he caught just, him no, with a little the, glass or something, he could when drink. he saw it earlier and thought he, he killed thought he was himself. dead, oh, but he was uh, okay. poisoning rats. Oh, with okay. the kids, they were they were advertising him like throughout the film and very probably testing it too. Okay. Yeah, because he and he uses it on his wife at the end of the movie to kill wow. her. Wow! Did it's, you catch those like newspaper clippings on the wall about his wife? His yeah, wife she was, was like, like tortured. A uh, famous journalist. She was like captured and tortured. Yeah, tortured no, in a catatonia by the English government. Mm. And there's implications that there aren't most of the world is not existing anymore well or at least it's just in like a bad completely yeah like mad max state, you know? dystopian future. yeah because there were those like starship troopers kind of ask like moments where it's like england prevails yeah. the only one yeah. remains yeah, yeah the beef yeah. of vendetta shit yeah, yeah that's, that's the similarities were there for sure with that yeah what would you give it man i would definitely watch it again um yeah i loved it personally it's because i I've kind of discussed how I really don't like rate, rating movies. Yeah, it's um, a tricky thing. Yeah, don't rate it then. But Just recommend it. I'm gonna go. I think I gave eighty. Um, I'm a, I'm just gonna go 80 for both. Okay, okay. Like, I'm feeling like they're right. equally good, equally rewatchable with what they bring to the table. Yeah, and what they are. Just sitting at home watching it, you know. Yeah, yeah. It was cool. I enjoyed yeah. it. Especially if you have like a sound bar, I think. Like you oh, said, I cranked like, it on Children of Man. It was pretty fun because uh, it was almost too much because it'd be very quiet I, and then things would really go off. Yeah, I think I think I really don't like war movies. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So it's kind of like when it divulges into like that war zone mm-hmm. part, it's kind of like. Uh, Oh, you don't like the camera following them as they're moving it's from it, barricade to Private barricade. Ryan, like uh, handheld I, camera at the end a lot. Yeah, just running like, around and yeah, just like 
a lot of the stuff in the war zone i was kind of just like eh. oh, i liked it more a little before i guess and what did you think of the ending i guess I mean, I, I liked it. Uh, I would say I don't know if I could come up with, with the anything. ship coming. I would like a little more, poetic, you know, a little poetic. I would have, I would have liked it just as much. If do you they think left like the ship? Open. It, I mean, I felt like it kind of was you, open. You like, do they still, even? Like the people on the hope, ship were probably. There's still no reason. To I would have liked if you don't know. He you know? survived, Clive Owen. I would have liked if he survived. He might you know? have. I mean, it's one of those situations where he's just technically slumped over when you see him. Movies <laughs> are weird, especially TV shows nowadays or something. You see that at the end of the show, you don't see them get buried True. in the ground. They might still be kicking. Yeah, you never might know. Might just lost a little too much blood, man. Yeah, perhaps. The sequel. It could be <laughs> grandchildren of men. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to think of some fucking way to get kicked over. He having the next baby with her. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the scene where they deliver the baby, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a really good 2006 CG baby. Yeah. Oh, I that's think completely yeah. computer generated at all times, and it looks really good. It looks better than a lot of CG in a lot of movies do now. Oh, oh like the baby was the when baby it's getting when born it was getting and born. when it's oh, completely okay. fake, yeah. Thought... You can't even have a baby like that in a movie at all. Not really. a lot of fresh that newborn. Young. Yeah, they were going to have to look at least like one or something. I, I love Sid. I he was know. very funny. Yeah. Yeah. My God. He's a fascist. Fuji yeah. face. Let me see your Fuji face. Fuji. That's good. Fuji. Fuji. He like, tells the actual Fuji girl that she's got yeah. a good Fuji face. He doesn't know. And then Marika, the, I'm just the using gypsy. the term they had. Yeah, the gypsy woman. Yeah. was very helpful and uh, like played her part and was there for the Yeah. I felt bad for, the, for the, the midwife, the, the big lady with the dreads. Uh, she yeah. had to go, the dreads. Yeah. She had to go. She had a she target had on just, her back. Yeah, she started start to hallucinate or whatever. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, she, she started fucking, doing some she weird, started she gospel. Weird, hallelujah, hallelujah. There was some sort of weird religion or something for some of them were following, and she was doing all kinds of that. A good distraction, I guess. Yeah. I did think the dark time, the scene where like, where he's like telling Michael Caine, he's like, "Oh, I'm deaf." He's like, "Oh." Then I can play my Zen music. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was like, like really gnarly. That uh, was like so weird. Yeah, like, yeah. What is going on? <laughs> Strawberry cough. But yeah, what do you, what do you give it, Mike? Yeah, like you said, ratings are crazy. So I would just take all of these with grain of salt. It's just a number, but I really like it, and uh, I think it's a good example of like sci-fi, and it's also a good example of I think like peak movie making like they had all the tools to do everything and it's you either can use them or you can't and now like people rely on cg too much and it looks yeah. bad they did kind of just the perfect combo of using things and still have to be smart um i just really enjoyed it i also want to a side note i don't recommend the book i actually didn't like it it's very different than the movie it's clear they didn't read the book and it's probably for the best mm. i didn't enjoy that nice. uh, but i'd give the movie mm. uh, let's say it i want to give myself some room to grow here because there are movies i like a lot more than children and men for sure so good an eighty nine. I love okay. that score. Okay. Yeah, I I would match it with the Primal Fear. I'd give it an eighty seven again. I love. Uh, I'm gonna call it like subtle sci fi. It it had a subtle sci fi element to it. Yeah. It was a dystopian. Dystopian. It is was the main. Yeah. It's not that far in the future. And no one's getting laser gunned. It, yeah. They, look what they drove like rivians. Yeah. yeah. It looked pretty yeah. spot on actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's I, I, had I weird love that. It's almost like time kind of stopped. Shit. Yeah, yeah. It was very realistic. Which makes sense because it was a bad, probably a bad economy, and they probably were sort of. Or at least like technology stopped. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like if all that shit happened in the real world, that's exactly how it would go. You know, it made me want to rewatch Brazil because that's yeah, a yeah, dystopian yeah, movie yeah. that like I'm not even sure I ever finished, and I've been hearing like I was watching a Terry Gilliam interview about how he basically like went to war with the studio and yeah. won. And how it was kind of like nobody wanted to work with him after that because yeah. he was kind of seen as like the difficult guy, you know. Mm -hmm. But and Brazil is is more like abstract for sure, but it's got a lot of weird like uh, there's ducts everywhere. Yeah, you know, it's connected by weird. Things. I just remember it's, the explosions all the time. Yeah, and, there's terrorist acts yeah. for sure. Yeah, and weird things going on. <laughs> it's uh, very absurd though. But yeah, well, yeah, I give it an 87, man. I, I highly recommend this film and Primal Fear. I think these were two great movies this week. Honestly. Another good week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, feast for my eyes. You know the, I mean? um, who knows when this episode will be up, but the Dracula Dead and Loving It slash Secrets and Lies episode is finally up. Whoop there whoop. were yeah, some. Got it back, huh? There were some. Uh, got it back. Got a fight. There were some challenges, but <laughs> the man we made it. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time.
Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks for joining Mike us. G. Of course, man. Of course. Our esteemed special guest host. On my screen.